Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys. Whatever time y'all were tuning in, I certainly appreciate y'all are here. Today's video, guys, we're going to be going over the knife haul that I got over the weekend. Plus, we're going to look at that uh, awesome trade I did with a pawn shop, Tony's Pawn Shop, uh, for that Buck 124. Can't wait to show y'all that up close. Also, guys, I want to let y'all know I had the vendor application for the Blade Show in the video description. It's a link. You click on it. It's an online form. You fill it out, and there is a $10 fee to reserve a table. And there's only, there was 30, but three's already been sold, so there's 27 tables left. So uh, first come, first serve. And I just want to uh, thank all y'all guys who have told me that y'all are coming. I just can't, can't wait to meet everyone. I just can't wait to... Uh, to be there guys it's gonna be fun it really is uh, i'm talking to some more food trucks this uh friday to at least get two more i've got one booked already that's the taco shack they make some awesome awesome food guys awesome and uh we are gonna have a concession stand inside we're probably gonna be serving some drinks and uh that's gonna be it like a, a, a soda pop or a, a water or something like that so it's going to be fun, guys. I cannot wait. But again, the uh, vendor application to have to reserve a table for the uh, Elleville Blade Show 2024 is in the uh, video description down below. So just click on it. It's self-explanatory. Fill it out. Pay $10, and you'll get a guaranteed spot. First come, first serve. There's 27 tables left. But again, guys, thank y'all for being here today, and I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, guys, here they are. It's a knife haul that I got over the weekend. I've got a few off camera because they're a little bit too big to put down here. I'll uh, look at those once we get done with here. But these two right here, guys, I got from Vic. That is Eric's brother. And they sound just alike. You would know it. And they're both very knowledgeable. They really are. But I got these two for $55. He knocked $5 off each. This one for $40 and this one for $15. Great buys. This right here, guys, is a Utica Girl Scout knife. It's a featherweight, they call it. Let's see, it's patent applied, I think, is what that stands for. But this is a great knife because Utica is really turned into a cut master also. But these are great little knives. Very light aluminum frame, aluminum bolsters. Beautiful, beautiful knife. It really is. Got these two blades. I'm going to clean it up. But it's going to clean up good. It really is. It's got that little bit of patina that could come off. I'm going to leave a lot of that patina, but some of that will come off. Great snap. And it's a Girl Scout. I love these knives. Somebody sent me one in, and I have fallen in love with it. I really have. This one right here, guys, is a K-Bar beautiful knife finger grooves in the handle and this is a leather handle but it's a k-bar 1233 usa it's got a brass guard it's got like a thumb groove with with jimping back there your fingers go right there and your thumb goes right there it's got that nun slip i love it good little skinning knife it really is but uh the handle's in great shape beautiful knife ain't it love it and i'm gonna wax the the leather sheath too it's kind of dry but it's gonna take it very well i'm gonna clean this one up here real soon and these are some uh my zippos i picked up i paid 12 bucks for this in the uh antique the big peach antique mall it's got the hercules on there it's like a cargo uh plane i believe for the air force the Zippo, it's got three uh, slashes on the left and three slashes on the right. Let's see what year this is from. That That is from, uh, that right there, the logo is from uh, 55 to 79. So three slashes on the left, three slashes on the right. That's 1968. How about that? That's pretty cool. See that? That's awesome, man. Love it. Love this car. And all it needs is some fluid. We're going to be lighting this one up soon. 
This one right here, guys, I paid ten dollars for it, but all it is is a a shell. See that right there? It needs a wick. It needs a a spring. It needs a flint. That's gonna be fun to to do. But this is a a two thousand model. That's May of two thousand. E is for May. A is for January, L is for December, and E is for May. Very cool. But this is a heavy Zippo. It really is. See, I only paid 10 bucks for it. Couldn't pass that up. I, I love that uh, front right there. It's like an aluminum toolbox. You know what I mean? It's very cool. And this one here, I gave 15 bucks for an easy pawn and jewelry over in Warner Robins. But all, all it needs is fluid, but the, I didn't realize the, the, the lid was a little loose. I'm going to be sending some of these back to Zippo and let them uh, fix that. But you see they had 40 bucks. Ain't nobody going to pay four, 40 bucks for a used Zippo. I don't know who they're uh, pricing over there for, but... You know they they they're not worth more than fifteen bucks. I'm I'm telling you, especially like this, and the condition it's in. Now if it was older, see it's a two thousand one, which it does have some age on it, but I wouldn't pay no more than fifteen for it. I, he wanted twenty. I'm not gonna pay twenty, but fifteen about the most I can, I could pay for him. Now it's solid brass, but it ain't worth thirty four forty bucks for a used one, because you can buy a brand new one that's solid brass for that. You really can. And this one right here, guys, is a LB7 Shrade with a sheath. I bought this at the Byron Pond Shop. They were very nice folks. Very nice folks. And they had that dog. It was a golden doodle. He was so cool. He wanted me to shake his hand. <laughs> but uh, this is, again, it's an LB7, Uncle Henry Shrade. Uh, it's just a classic LB7. And I sharpened it in, in the house, guys, with my... Work sharp sharpener. That thing has a razor edge on, on it now. Great knife. These are just overall great knives. I love them. I really do. I'll buy them any chance I get. Um, just like the Buck 110s. If I come across them with a good price, I'm going to buy them. And this is a good price with a sheath. It really is. In this good of shape. But I'm going to wax this sheath down and clean that knife up here real soon. And these right here, guys, is uh, Western Coleman. It's like a skinning set. This thing was hid. It really was. But this is a uh, R14. It's got stainless steel. And I also sharp sharpen this with my little work sharp. And it's razor sharp. But it's got a lanyard hole. I'm going to be putting some leather in here it's got that rubber non-slip grip uh mainly because when you're skinning you can get blood down here and it won't uh you, you, the knife will be slippery at all but it's got a good grip finger grooves beautiful knife this right here is an awesome knife too western coleman it's a r12 stainless it's got that uh grind on it i love that it's a drop point blade, looks like, or a spear point. It could be a spear point or a drop point. It does have a lanyard hole. Love it. It's, again, it's got that non slip grip on it. It fits in your hand really good. I'm going to uh, put wax on this, clean it, clean these knives up some, and give it to my son because he likes to hunt now and skin deer. So th this is going to him. The one that, that lives here, he was in the Marine Corps. He was a captain. So I'm going to be giving this to him soon. Uh, but you see how this sheath is really well made. See how thick it is? Beautiful set. It really is. And this one right here, guys, is probably the buy of the day. I only gave $10 for Portland, Oregon, USA made Leatherman. Now there's some out there or a lot out there now that don't have USA on there at all. Those are made with imported parts, so be leery of that. 
you need to look for the ones that's actually got USA on there. Those are actually the ones that's made here in the United States. But this one here, guys, is a old one. It's got all kind of good tools in there. You got a, let's go over these first. Turn it this way. You got a serrated, well, you got a, a saw. Okay, then you got a punch blade. That could be used as a very small screwdriver as well. It's flat. Then you got a, a Phillips head screwdriver. It looks like a wire stripper right here. Then you got a can opener. Right here. It's got like a little blade right there too. That might be used to strip wire. I don't know. I have to look. But then you got a serrated blade. I'm trying to be careful not to cut myself. <laughs> but that's, uh, that blade looks good. But all these lock. You fold out and it locks right there. And then you got uh, this side here. Start over here again. You got a file. You got a big flat tip screwdriver. You can use it to pry bar too because it's pretty thick. See right there? Then you got a, a small flat tip screwdriver. And I think that's another like a wire stripper like the uh, Victoria Knox has. Then you got a small blade here. Looks like a little punch blade. And then you got uh, your your regular blade right here. And that has Leatherman USA on it. And so does this uh, this blade here has the same thing. See here? Leatherman USA. So guys, this is a very, very nice find for 10 bucks. It's got your ruler back here. Very cool. As you can... Do that way. See right there? Now you got a, a ruler. See that? Ain't that cool? And of course, you got your uh, wire cutters with your, uh, your needle nose pliers. Very, very handy. And I just want to thank Mr. Chuck again for this right here. See that right there? A sheath for it. I know it ain't the right kind, but it will work all day long. Ain't that cool? See there? Works real good. Love it. Well, thank you, Chuck. Great buy. Great buy. It really was. And guys, this next knife here is a, a, a highly collectible knife. It's a brownie. 601 Barracuda large drop point okay and y'all see the dough in that you see the uh the buck I, I tell everybody this but see you can also see the dough in there too inside the buck see there ain't that awesome pretty cool ain't it you see the buck outline but inside the buck is the dough that's awesome, ain't it? But anyway, this is a highly collectible knife. They had a loose tag up under it for $159. I'm, I know they didn't want no $159 for it. I know they didn't. But they had this on the box for $39.95. That's their booth number right there. I think it's a B23 or A23. I think it's B23. But uh, this is made in Siki City, Japan, guys. And it's a 601 Barracuda large drop point. It's brand new. Brand spanking new. Got the paperwork with, with it. It's got a pocket clip. Ain't that cool? It's got thumb studs. But it's got a titanium lock right here. See here? With rubber grips right there. Very cool knife. But there it is right there. Model 601 Japan. Browning right there. Ain't that awesome? Very cool. This knife will never be used. It's just going to go in my collection. Very cool knife. Very cool find. Love it, guys. I really do. The only thing they should have done is a lanyard hole back here, but I know it's got a pocket clip. None, none re reversible, too. You can't move it around, so it's going to be always carried like this with point up. Great find.
But this is like, uh, this knife, guys, goes for about 80 bucks on eBay. It really does. So, I felt like it was a good buy. Awesome. Love it. And this next knife, guys, I paid up a little for it, but that's, I felt like it was, was worth that. I paid 112 bucks for this knife. And I've already got two of them. I've got a K-Bar one, and I've got an Ontario Knife Company one that I got issued in, in Desert Storm. And this is the K-Bar type style knife. But this is a Case Double X USMC. I'm going to raise this up a little bit. But this is a very, very good knife. It was used some. But it is a uh, 1992 USMC USA case, double X, Bradford, Pennsylvania. Hoorah. But very, very good knife. I felt like I was going to need to pay 112 bucks for it. So, uh, and the main reason I wanted it, guys, because in 1992, I was in, in the Mediterranean on my second Mediterranean float. I was in the Marine Corps, so very cool find with the date on it. That's when they were dating knives uh, from 90 to 93. They were putting actual dates on. And then the case collectors were complaining, and they started the dot system again back in 93, part of 93. And now, the 90s, with the dates on them, they're getting more collectible now. Than the one with the uh, dots on them. <laughs> so, because uh, they only made them for three years. You know, know what I mean? So, they're they're getting uh, scarcer and scarcer every year. So, uh, but this was a nice find. It really was. Very, very cool find. For 112 bucks. Couldn't pa pass it up, guys. The sheath's in great shape. Um, so, I had to, to pick this one up. I love it. And the last but not least, guys, is this big boy right here, the Buck 124. You see what they were wanting for it, $400. I mean, I, I, I think that's a little overpriced, but it's definitely worth what I traded for it, the 250 But it's a beautiful knife. The sheath's in excellent shape. See that right there? Beautiful, beautiful knife. And this is going to be on display in my knife shop. You see, it's got the, I don't know if you call it rosewood or what, you know. But it's a beautiful handled knife. And I'm going to wipe it down. It's got some, like a little mark right there. But I think that'll come out with, with, with never dull. But I don't think the blade's ever been used. It ain't got no big scratches on it or anything. It's got some scratches back here. But that was a buff out real good. I'm going to clean this knife up, guys. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful knife. It really feels good in the hand, too. It just fills your hand up. I love it, man. Love that knife. And I probably gave him a little bit more than with the knives I, I gave, gave him. But you know what? The knives I had to give... Especially the uh, Spotico. I like that knife, but I didn't love it. You know what I mean? Um, and the other ones were just the ones I, also, I had two or three of, you know? And uh, I wanted just I wanted this knife bad. So I, I, I wanted to sweeten the pot, and it worked. I didn't have to put no money out on, on it. So, yeah, great knife. And these are very rare and collectible. They really are beautiful knife with a very very nice sheath it will be on forever on display in my knife shop along with a i have a brand new buck 119 still in the box i have a few uh more bucks that are kind of rare feet fixed blades so they're all going to be in there one display case so very cool and now, guys, this is the new my new eBay knife, and it's started me on a new collection series run. And this is a bone handle knife. 
This is pre-1940. See, it's got brass liners in there. But this guy's right here is a gentleman's knife. And it's a King Cutter, E.C. Simmons. How about that? Great snap. But you see, it's got that blade here. It's got the uh, fingernail file with a fingernail cleaner. Then you got this blade here. See how clean it is on the inside? Very, very cool knife. Is it not? Bone handle. But see, I've got a uh, very nice sign for a king cutter and you can't have a very nice sign like that without having some old king cutter knives in there so i'm on a quest to find me some and uh i'm mainly i'm looking for the ones with bone handles or stag i don't know if they made king cutter with stag but i know they made a bunch of them with bone especially barlow i have uh several barlows now that's got the uh, the blades ain't real good on them, but the handles are beautiful. They made some excellent knives back in the day. They really did. I think King Cutter was uh, in business with E.C. Simmons. I want to say 1870 when they started. Let me let me see here. See, these are all in alphabetical order. Uh, King Cutter, E.C. Yeah, see here, 1870 to 1940. So that's when this one was made because it's got the E.C. Simmons right here on the blade, St. Louis, Missouri. Then Shetley took it over in 1940 and they made knives in 1960. See, the King Cutter with E.C. Simmons on there is uh, three stars. Again, they were made from 1870 to 1940. They were in business for 70 years, guys. They're really older than Case was at, at the time. Very cool. And they, the quality of the knives is excellent. Really are. Very cool. Love these books. Well, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed the video today. I cannot say enough, guys, how I love to go hunt for knives. It's like Mr. Wade says, he's got to get that fixed. And after a week goes by, I feel the same way. I feel like I need to go buy a knife. And I had to hold out sometimes for about two or three weeks. But uh, I could do, I could hunt for knives every day. I really could. I just love it. And, and, and when you go into a pawn shop or you go to a flea market and it takes you all day to find one good knife, that's just part of it guys it's just part of it it's like the one of robin's trip i was striking out everywhere and i the prices were too high but then i come across the easy pawn and i got the uh the leatherman for 10 bucks and uh, that's usa made one too love it i really do and thank you again chuck for the sheath buddy thank you um it's just that hunt guys i, I love i love to do I love that better than repairing knives. I love repairing knives. I love working on knives. I love cleaning a knife. I love that. But I really love the hunt. Because it's just the thrill of finding something that you've never seen before. Or you find a good knife. You know it's well made. And you can't read the tank stamp because it's so rusty. And you're like, man, I can't wait to get home and find out what this is. Look it up in the book. You only gave like a dollar to five dollars for it. And then if it was in mint condition, you'll find out it was worth $250 or $275. And you're like, oh, my God. So you clean it up, get the best looking at it can be, and you might put it on eBay and get 60 bucks for it. You know, it's just it's just that right there in a nutshell that I love, I, which I don't sell knives anymore. I used to sell knives all the time on eBay. I did it for about eight or nine years. And uh, absolutely loved it but the doggone uh prices on ebay just kept going up and up, and up. i can't have, i mean you're you're really working for them is all you're doing you know unless you sell 
a whole lot because the fees are so outrageous on eBay. So anyway, enough of that, but that's why I got out of it. And uh, I'm letting this burn a little bit right here. This is the Hercules 1968 Zippo, right? Love it. See, I don't want to light up right away. I'm probably going to change out this. There we go. Probably going to change out this wick. See that right there? It's just an old wick. So I'm going to change it out. It's got the asbestos wick in it, too. Anything before, I think, 1972 or sometime in the 70s, they stopped putting the asbestos wicks in there. So whenever if you ever get an old zippo like 70 or below it's probably got an asbestos wick in it just let y'all know just be careful so i've got uh two or three here i'm gonna be changing the wicks out soon and we'll do that on camera how about that i'll film it uh it'll be fun i'll clean up a knife do a mail call and change out some wicks anyway guys thank y'all for tuning in today i'm gonna say god bless y'all and till we meet again guys Y'all be like a good night. Stay sharp. The knife doctor on the road, saving old blade. So many stories told. USA made, fixing those pranks, handles repair, they shine and they sing. Three market pawn shops. Antique stove, searching for treasure, always room for more.